So this is admittedly a bit of a strange matchup and a bit of a David and Goliath situation as cameras go. Um, so what we're doing is we're comparing, um, well, two cameras where the, the comparison really not the first one that comes to mind. You know, we've got, uh, in one hand, we've got the Fuji Classa S from between 2007 and 2015 in one corner. And in the other corner, we've got the Olympus XA, the original one, built uh, 1979 to 1985. Um, yeah, you know, both are small, you know, 35 millimeter point and shoot type cameras. And, you know, and from the outside, that's sort of where the similarities end. You know, one, you've got the Classa, high end, you know, high end camera. Same vein as the Nikon 35 Ti or the Yashica T3 or T4. And in the other side, we've got the Olympus XA, which is small, compact, affordable. And as far as I understand, doesn't really aspire to be much more than what it is. You know, daughter, <laughs> this is my daughter's camera. She refers to the XA as feeling like a disposable camera. But, you know, in, in a good way, it, it, you know, it does. I think the advanced wheel has a lot to do with that. Um, yeah, so I mean, so the, the, the Class S, um, all metal construction, and so it feels surprisingly hefty. And then the actually, the XA is, is heavier than you might expect. Uh, you know, both cameras, you know, given that that you know the price points there, even their original price points, and given the fact that the uh, XA has uh, plastic, you know, film guides, the the weight of the cameras is actually within about 50 grams of each other, um, you know, for what uh, with a roll of film in them, and and for you know for in terms of you know usability or portability, I find that the the class S uh, is easier to handhold than the XA because you know you've it just my fingers are just too big and I get fingers in front of the lens and uh, the shutter button is incredibly delicate so I end up taking photographs of fingers and things I don't expect with this um, with this camera whereas this is a is a, it's just just a little bit bigger and it's just easier to hold um, so for lenses the, the class S has a 38 millimeter f 2.8 lens uh, Fujinon lens the Olympus is a 35 millimeter f 2.8 lens. Um, Autofocus in the Classa, rangefinder focus with a coupled rangefinder in the XA uh, with a four bladed diaphragm. Classa S is a five bladed diaphragm. Um, viewfinders are, are actually fairly similar. The, um, uh, you just sort of look through them and you, <laughs> you, you, you see some stuff. Uh, the uh, Classa S has about 85% of the viewfinder. And I think actually the full viewfinder is in the Olympus. Whoop, just took a photo. Uh, the full viewfinder is in the Olympus, but um, it's kind of hard to tell. And the other thing about the Olympus is you actually have to be, r your eye has to be right perfectly square to the viewfinder. Otherwise, it's very difficult to see the rangefinder patch or the uh, shutter speeds that run down the, the left-hand side of the viewfinder. So, um, you know, so at this point, you, you know, I mean, the, the cameras actually begin to look fairly similar. You know, 35 millimeter, f2.8, compact. They're not that much of a difference size-wise, roughly the same weight. Um, but you, you know, let's be honest. The, the Classa is a is a is a is a finer camera. I mean, it has film advance. It has a self timer. Oh, well, actually, no. The XA has a self timer. No, okay. The XA has a self timer. Um, it has. But anyway, it has two stops of, uh, of exposure compensation. It's got you know, all kinds of other stuff. You put a, put a cable release into it, um, yeah, auto advance, uh, has program mode. It has, there's, you know, there's, there's a lot going on here. The XA um, has none of those things. Um, manual film setting, manual focus, manual aperture, manual everything. So a little while ago, I did a video of the uh, Hasselblad 110 F2 versus the Fuji 110 F2. Um, have lenses were produced probably at least 40 years apart. And the Hasselblad lens held up incredibly well compared to the Fuji, um, you know, even on a 50 megapixel sensor. So, so even, you know, even though you have older technology, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, that it's not going to be able to handle uh, the demands of, of modern. In this case, we aren't really demanding modern because both these cameras have film in them. And in our case, the lenses are, are quite different. The, uh, I mean, you know, they're both the same focal length and they're both f2.8, but the Fuji lens is miles sharper and better in pretty much any way than the Olympus lens. So, um, but I did go out and I shot both cameras side by side uh, with a number of different, you know, same film in each camera, number of different uh, scenes and situations, and here's a few. Uh, remembering that they're just raw scans, uh, a little bit of color correction, but pretty much that was it, and you can tell right away just how much sharper and how much more contrasty the uh, class of lens is, the Fujinon lens is, over the Olympus lens. So, uh, first shot is mountain in, not mountain, island, island at low tide, or no, sorry, island at high tide, uh, over the north shore of Vancouver. This is the XA. You see a nice little, uh, nice little bit of uh, lens flare down the bottom there, but um, 
that just adds to the uh, adds to the contrast or adds to the situation. So if I go to go to 100%, so there's the island at 100%. And here's the class up. Now I'm not entirely sure if I got kind of a bum roll of film because these these images are like really contrasty depending depend or, um, depending on how you want to you know you want to look at it. But you can just you can just see the just like there's just way more sharpness in this lens than there is in the uh, in the Olympus. Okay, so this is backlit. Uh, this is the XA shooting um, into, uh, well, obviously into the sun, as you can see it in the corner of the frame there. And um, uh, fairly flat. And, and actually, it, I think we're shooting F11 or F16. So it's, it's, it's nice and sharp. And, and uh, here's, the, here's the class of version of the, roughly the same thing. And you can just see that it's just, it's just, you know, it's just less muddy in this case. And um, it feels, especially just just the face of the clock and and everything. It just it just feels sharper. So this is uh, this is a, a building in downtown Vancouver. This is this is this is our XA, looking uh, looking at the flak block, and then there's there's the class as well. And, and in this case, you know, I mean, like th th these were cameras were set up ISO 100. And this was T Max 100 that I was shooting with, and both of them had. Um, Basically, just you know, just aperture priority, um, just shoot. And so, so this is this is a lot of this is the metering of the camera. But I will say that the the, the the class. I mean, I suppose I could go in and I could bump the bump the levels a little bit. But but, but the shadows are kind of blocking up here a little bit, and it feels feels like it's underexposed. And I think that might actually be one thing is that the, the, the is that the class of exposes thinking more like transparency film. So so tends to underexpose things so you don't blow your highlights and transparencies. Uh, when you start looking at more color film, uh, and so the, here's our here's our XA Royal Gold, a uh, little bit of chromatic operation there, but um, you know you can just see how things are starting to get a bit a bit you know as you know as you use a technical term a bit mushy in the corners, and whereas the, the class is is much sharper, and also more contrasty, and you can see how you're just not really holding a lot of highlight detail, which which is a bit a bit worrisome. So. Anyway, so this is the, this is sort of the iconic shot of, of of the whoa, what a difference, is that when you see the class up, you can you just you're just looking at this yellow bridge here. This is the second arrows bridge in in Vancouver, the Iron Workers Memorial Bridge, and you can see how sharp that is right up to the edge of frame. And then you can see here how oops, how you know how how blurry th those images are getting. And and this was this was shot in I think f8 or f11. And you really should be, you know, you should be, you should be getting more out of your, out of your camera uh, lens, uh, you know, given that you're really not asking too much of it. But the difference between the two is, is noteworthy. So, um, so that's, you know, so that's kind of where it's at. But, but it is interesting to see how, how, um, how softer and more pliable, I guess, the, the images from the XA are compared to the, the really contrasty and snappy images from the, from the, from the class. And these are the last two here, some, some magnolia blossoms. Um, and given that it's the you know the end of December and freezing cold outside, it's 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 a bit weird to look at these. But um, so they're you know 200 percent. You know the magnolia blossoms are you know you can see you know nice and sharp. You can start seeing actually like you know like even some of the veins in the leaves. Whereas as you're just not I just you're just not there's the leaves up there. You're just not gonna not gonna see them nearly as much in the in the in the uh, in the Olympus. So so there's you know there's a few examples side by side of uh, the you know the two lenses and the two cameras and um, hopefully that gives you a bit of information about how they all work. You know the class is tack sharp and has a lot more snap to it. Um, but you know I will say that the, the Olympus does have a fair amount of mojo and it's you know it's it's you have to remember as well, it's manual focus. It's, it's kind of hard to see the rangefinder patch, you know, and so, you know, who knows, you know, if it's even in focus, which is, is that's my way of saying that, that, you know, operator error might be, might be part of that. But really when it comes down to it, you know, the XA lens and the Fuji lens, I mean, it just doesn't, you know, this lens is not a patch on, on this lens. But, I mean, I guess really the question is, is, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, we obsess about sharpness, we obsess about, Contrast. We obsess about all of these, all of these technical aspects, but, but really the question becomes, you know, is it fun to shoot with? You know, does the camera have mojo? And, and you know, actually both of these cameras do. And I actually, to be honest, I find the Class S lens to be maybe a little bit too clinical, and maybe a little bit too sharp, and maybe a little bit too contrasty. And the XA lens is maybe a little not sharp enough, and maybe not quite clinical enough, and maybe maybe a little soft on the contrast. And 
So the perfect camera probably is sort of in the, in the middle between these two. And you know, a big part of these these cameras these days, anyway, is just how outrageously expensive they are. And 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 you know, and this one, you know, the Fuji or not the Fuji, the Olympus is is outrageously expensive because somebody on Instagram or on TikTok uses it, and all of a sudden the price went supernova. And this camera is really popular because it's an amazing camera, and it uh, was used or it was sorry was sold only in the Japanese market, and they really didn't make very many of them. And they're really quite popular. And so what you have is you have two cameras who are, that are actually worth a whole lot more than they should be worth. But they, you know, this one because everybody wants one. This one because no one can get one. And um, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a strange situation where you know you've got. I think this is worth about three hundred dollars Canadian, and this is worth about twelve hundred dollars Canadian. Um, but you know, but it's it's so. You know, so which one do you go for? I mean, I mean, you know, this is definitely the better camera. There's no question about that, and it certainly is. Is um, uh, you know, you're you, you know, you reliably, you're going to get much better images out of the out of the Fuji than you will out of the Olympus. But the Olympus is a lot of fun, and w with the notable exception of getting fingertips in front of the lens and taking photographs of your forehead um, when you aren't paying attention with the shutter button. Uh, it is actually incredibly small, incredibly complex, um, compact, and, um, and it's, it's fun to have in your pocket. So as long, I think, as long as you are um, aware of the limitations of this camera, and you know, whether or not you can find one of these the limitations of this camera, uh, you're probably going to be okay with either one. I mean, I would. I don't think you want to make a big print out of something that comes out of this camera, but but for for what it is, you know, it's 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 fine. This, for what it is, it's amazing. I mean, it's like the, the, the images are incredibly sharp, and, and I, you know, and I, I don't know what they, how they'd stand up to a Leica lens or something really like a Zeiss lens or something like that. But Fujinon lenses are famously great and totally underrated. So, I think that, you know, I think that y you, 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 there's no way that you could buy that class S and wish that you had bought something else unless there's some sort of a fundamental aspect of the controls that you that you don't like. I mean, image quality. And usability, it's 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 you know pretty amazing. So there's our you know comparison of two quite well you know cam you know quite similar and yet totally different cameras. Um, you know for what that's worth. So thanks for watching.